Okay, guys, welcome back to the all new Q&A uh, question and answer video series, crucial digital marketing questions and answers for enlightened subject matter experts. So in this particular episode, we are addressing a very crucial question, which is a question that some might be asking themselves when it comes to qualifications. And what do I mean by that? So for example, you might be thinking to yourself, am I a subject matter expert enough? Or what exactly makes me a subject matter expert? You know, from the outside looking in, it's easy for us to look at a CNN or look at uh, a podcast or listen to a podcast or whatever it is, even video content on YouTube and think, oh yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about or this gal knows what she's talking about, right? But what exactly makes someone a subject matter expert? And why does it matter? Okay, why is it important? What's the real value of being, you know, designated in quotes here, a subject matter expert? So the outcome of this is that you should be able to learn how to easily turn your years of professional experience into high profit products and services online. And I also believe you should be able to stress less and earn more as a result of that, uh, identifying how you are um, a representation of this status, right, of being a subject matter expert. So let me break down something for you when I think of, and I said this a little bit in the previous video leading up to this, um, you know, what I mean or what I'm referring to when we're talking about a subject matter expert. So a subject matter expert comes down to <clears throat> a few things or a few bullets, I would say, right? Someone who has specialized knowledge, right? So um, if you have specialized knowledge, right? You are in the category, you're in the swimming pool, right? Of those who class can classifiably be referred to as subject matter experts. If you have hands-on experience and the ability to um, promise and produce and deliver on specific results for a client, right? Consistently or clients, consistently, you are also in this pool, in this category of subject matter experts. So as always, let's go to the drawing board where I can just map this out for you just so that we're looking at the same information, right? So we are gonna talk about what it is to be a subject matter expert, okay? And here it is, okay? That's what we're focused on. Okay, so the bullets that I would like to highlight, the things I'd like to share that are bullets on this are the following, as I mentioned, specialized knowledge, right? All right. Um, now, again, this is not an exhaustive list. You, I mean, there's tons of other things you can see and identify with that are uh, qualifiers, right? For someone being a subject matter expert. So hands-on, experience. And here's what I mean, my hands-on experience. I'm not, it's not just, oh yeah, you know, I've read 1200 books on this subject. Therefore I know it. Like, have you applied yourself to it? Have you engaged um, with that activity um, or that process enough to have had some success, had some failures, had some stories and testimonials, right? So hands-on experience is definitely very, very valuable. Um, the other thing, as I mentioned a moment ago is um, the ability to promise and produce, even deliver, of course, right? Um, on specific results, oops, sorry, consistently, right? This is key. Right, because I get it. Sometimes we have enough experience to do something here or there, um, and and you know produce some spotty results. But to be able to do something consistently and promise and produce on those results and those promises, right? Um, that's very very important, right? To be able to do it consistently. So there is one more thing though, right? That I want to highlight. Um, that's a serious question to address along with this, and it's this. Here's what it just comes down to, okay? And it's why does this matter, right? Why does being a subject matter expert even matter, okay? Big deal that someone's a subject matter expert. Why do you think it matters, okay? So I'm gonna draw out 
why inside of a particular model and a framework that you've heard me talk about, maybe you've heard me talk about, maybe this is the first time you're gonna hear me talk about it. Here's why this becomes very, very, very important, okay? So there's a model that I've been talking about um, for almost about a year now, referred to as the invincible consultant model, right? And I'm just gonna use it as a reference point because um, it's gonna highlight some key things that you should be aware of that you're up against if you are at the beginning phases of your journey in exercising your subject matter expertise. So this model, right, of the invincible consultant, let me just kind of label it here. Okay. It consists of three domains, three power regions, areas, zones, if you will. The first zone is subject matter expertise. Okay. The next zone is sales or conversion mastery, right? And we could even say sales conversion um, expertise as well, but okay, sales conversion mastery, right? This is essentially when someone does have an interaction with you and is considering participating or coming on board or becoming a client, do you have the ability to just really make it very plain, very clear to them that you're their best option, right? Given what they're looking for, okay? And then this here is marketing mastery, okay? This can be anywhere from YouTube ads, Facebook ads, uh, print ads, um, you name it, right? Uh, but I, I could add, you know, digital marketing mastery, given the era that we're in, that digital marketing is a very, very big key of this, right? But at the end of the day, marketing is marketing. And of course, digital marketing is a subset of the global umbrella of marketing, right? But again, mastery, right, is key here. Okay, so now why do all these things matter? So think about it like this. When someone is looking for a solution, right, or they have a problem. All right, let's just start. They have a problem and they are looking for solutions. Okay, what are they looking for? Okay, so when they're looking for solutions, right, or answers, depending on how uh, painful this problem is, they are looking for help. Okay. And that help is going to produce some outcome, right? A great night's rest. Okay. Uh, more time on their hands. Um, more peace, right? Peace of mind. Um, better health. More money for them, right? Uh, increase in status. I mean, we can go on, right? All the kind of things that, you know, the, the impact, right, of your help um, is gonna be on their life, okay? So who do you think, so now when they're going for these answers, when they're looking for someone to just provide any of these results, right? Or answers um, that will give these results, do you think that they wanna go to an amateur, right? or a professional, right? Who has a specialization in addressing their problems. Which one of those do you think they wanna go with, right? And I hope you would, you would select the professional, okay? So, so by default, I, you know, any market, any industry is always dealing with some group of people that really think they got it down, but they really are, they are the amateurs, okay? Right, they are, um, they're the amateurs, right? The people who are just starting out, but they wanna be, you know, top dog, but they're just amateurs at best, okay? 
nothing wrong with being an amateur, but you just, you gotta, you gotta be careful not to get yourself in a situation where you got more, more than you can handle. And then of course, here comes the, um, you know, slamming that happens and remarks about your business and about your strategy and about everything that you do, because you just weren't equipped to handle something that was very complex or sophisticated. Right. So, so when people go and they search for solutions, right, they're going there, you know, they can stumble upon amateurs or they can stumble upon the professional. Okay. And that professional is what they really want. But if the amateurs are out there pronouncing themselves because they have better ways of broadcasting themselves and visibility wise are doing uh, the work of uh, using digital marketing to make themselves more prominent, right? By default, by default, you know, they're going to get the business, right? However, if the client or prospect is really educated, who they're looking for is the professional, right? And when they get and realize, of course, they ideally hope, I hope they know, right? After some lessons, know the difference between the amateur and the professional. And when they know the difference, when they can sense the difference between the professional and the amateur, right? It makes your life that much easier, right? So it's like the, if you, if you look at the chart and you look at results, right? So let's just say this vertical line is the results. Okay. So you got, you got your amateur here and you got your professional here. Okay. So the amateur can produce results. Okay. Let's just say this is the bar that they, they, uh, uh, that they uh, produce, right? For the professional, you want to make it clear that, right? These are the results you can produce, okay? So if the prospect is looking at who's going to deliver on the results, are they going to go with amateur? Are they going to go with professional? So when you position yourself as a subject matter expert, right? And of course, you've done some due diligence in being able to market yourself accordingly, it makes it easier on you to be identified and it makes it easier on the client to identify you. And there's ease on the client, on the prospects part and ease on your part in, in uh, being easy to be found. It just makes everybody happier, right? Everyone gets what they want. The, the person who's looking for a solution, who wants a great nice rest, more time, more peace of mind, better health, more money, increase in status or whatever the outcome is, right? They're happier knowing that they're working with a professional. They're happier knowing that they're working with a subject matter expert, right? Who has the specialized knowledge, who has the hands-on experience, who has the ability to promise and deliver and uh, uh, produce, even deliver on specific results. Just makes everybody happier, okay? So that's why it matters, right? Because you don't have to work as hard to convince someone when you do have, you know, evidence of your specialized knowledge, your hands-on experience and your ability to produce results, of course, as shown in maybe testimonials or a website that you put together or whatever it is that you've done, right? It doesn't matter what industry that you're in, as long as you're able to display these things, right? In a way that's very clear and compelling, it makes it easier for someone to go, oh yeah, that's who I want to work with. And that's this circle right here, the sales and conversion mastery, right? Being able to articulate that you have this going on, right? And of course, um, as a subject matter expert who has demonstrated and has proven that you know what you're talking about, it just makes that client, again, happy to be working with you, right? And here's the best part. When it comes to paying for solutions, who do you think the customer is willing to pay more money to? The amateur? or the professional, right? See, I'd rather pay more to the professional, to the subject matter expert, right? Knowing that they're gonna guarantee that I'm gonna experience this, okay? The amateur, yeah, they, you know, they can hold their own in some cases and ask for, for some money, but you know, you'll notice, you know, um, sometimes if you're dealing with somebody who's an amateur, um, or doesn't really, really know, can't really give you that sense of security or confidence that you're going to get the job done. You don't really want to pay them. You don't really want to part with your money. You, you start like kind of working out a deal like, oh, well, if you, if you do this, then I'll give you that versus 
They work on a professional who's proven, who's gotten a job done, who maybe even came as a referral to you, right? As someone who's best in class, you're like, here, take my money, okay? So if you want the here, take my money, right, scenario, you better uh, get really good at articulating, right? And demonstrating that you have this specialized knowledge, right? As evidenced in either the work you produce on a regular basis um, or are in the process of producing some way, somehow, you've got to demonstrate that, right? So why does it matter? It matters because it pays more. That's why, right? I mean, after everything is said and done, right? If you are about the business of really being in a, of extraordinary service and value, it is far more valuable to you to really be a subject matter expert, right? If you've got some certifications you want to get or secure, uh, sure, I get that, right? But you don't always need that. You just, at the end of the day, you want to be able to promise and produce and even deliver on specific results. And when someone knows that and you're able to articulate that, what happens is you can be very uh, well compensated and rewarded, right? For being a demonstrated, hands down subject matter expert, right? That's why it matters. So inside of this model, of being a subject matter expertise, a subject matter expert, uh, sales and conversion master and digital marketing um, professional or digital, or even if you outsource it, um, right in here, right? The X factor is where victory is, right? Because you, if you have all these things happening all the time, um, consistently all the time, uh, it becomes a no brainer that you are the go-to expert to work with. Okay, makes life so much easier for you. And again, you get a happier customer who is more than happy to refer more business to you, who is more than happy to celebrate and tell their friends who tell their friends to again, come back and work with you. Okay, and there's some efficiency with that process in and of itself. All right, so let's go back. Um, we got the job done here um, as far as communicating this. And let me switch screens. Okay. All right. Okay, oops. So let us get back here. All right, so now we're taking a look at the drawing board. And as always, there is a lot of misinformation about this, right? Everyone says, oh, I'm a, I'm a subject matter expert, I'm a subject matter expert. Okay, fantastic. Well, um, you know, of course, you could always check their uh, referrals, recommendations, so on and so forth. You, just, you know, obviously, in some cases, even just see evidence either in the work that they do, if they're in the graphics world, or if they're in the online um, website development world, like some things are just, you know, you can see it, right? And other things, you need to look a little bit more to understand the nature of the work and how results are measured. Um, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of misinformation that people are drowning in, right? And, you know, now that you know this, I always say, what now, right? What's the big deal about knowing this? Well, if you are a subject matter expert beginning or at that intermediate level, um, and you now can recognize, like, maybe you have not been leaning on really underscoring, like, look, I'm best in class when it comes to producing this result, right? We haven't been communicating that with your clients or prospects. Um, you know, they're not willing to, pay, they're not going to be, in some cases, willing to pay you more, right? Because they're still going to see you as an amateur, see you as someone who's still, quote unquote, starting out, right? So the what now is you want to start taking inventory of, you know, how is it that you can show up more um, in a more pronounced way that you are the subject matter expert in a particular category that is, you um, in line with the challenges that they're facing, right? That can handle the, address those challenges, address those pain points with ease and give them that great night's rest that they're looking for, okay? However, the big deal is some people don't have all of that together, right? It's a lot for them to think about, right? They've done a, they have a great body of work. They just haven't assembled it. They haven't put it together. They haven't packaged it. They wanna learn how to package their knowledge, their wisdom, their years of experience in the form of an ebook, in the form of a podcast, in the form of, a webinar or whatever it might be, right? And uh, in order to really be more pronounced, okay? Because those are some of the things that that are very, very helpful in helping you be easy, easier to uh, identify, right? As a subject matter expert. And so if you could use a little help, right? 
with that with that process with you know getting your mind wrapped around this whole thing of course um you know the powers in your in your hands and the balls in your court for you to take the next natural step for those of you who are already in the invisible consultant program of course you know i've been talking about this and have shared with you about this on some previous zoom calls and for those of you who this is your first time hearing about this learning about this you want to see you you know, I think it'd be in your interest if, you know, you recognize like, wow, the reason why you're, uh, you know, sort of poorly compensated or just not earning as much as you'd like is partly because of how, you know, you're articulating who you are in your industry, right? And um, if you'd like to kind of step into that, into that arena where you are more of a, um, let me see if this table is still here. Yeah. If you want to step into that arena where you are compensated more, right, you just have to be able to articulate and have your work be um, packaged in a way that makes it easier for people to say, oh, yeah, this is who I want to work with, right? So um, let's take the initiative, schedule an invincible consultant strategy session so we can kind of go over where you're at, what you're, where you're headed, what, what you have a hard time articulating, right? So that it could be easier for you to be uh, better uh, rewarded for your years of experience or skills or talent, right? Whatever that might be. So thank you again for watching and checking out this episode of the Crucial Digital Marketing Questions and Answers. As you can sense, you know, it, it incorporates um, some digital marketing aspects, but a lot of it really has to do with just you, right? Just within yourself, uh, being able to see things that you may have not been able to um, tease out previously. And once you do tease those things out and once you do start to underscore those things and make it easier for you to just navigate the world of consulting, right? And as a digital, as a subject matter expert. So that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, we will see you in the upcoming uh, videos. Take care, guys.